Hey folks, Lake Speed Jr. for Total Seal Piston Rings. And today I got a special treat for you. One, we're in the United Kingdom. We're not in the United States right yeah. now. And I'm with my good old dear friend, Andrew Silderbrand at Anglo American Oil Company. All right Now you may not have heard of Anglo American Oil Company in the United States, but if you're here in the UK, then everyone knows this guy because they're the Sunoco fuel distributor for all of the UK and Europe, right? Yeah, and the Middle East. And the Middle East. Yeah, so, yeah, so we supply a lot of fuel to a lot of different championships that we've done for many, many years. We also have a blending plant uh, on site where we do a lot of specialist fuels. And that's why we're here, because it's one thing to talk about fuels to people, with people that use fuel. It's different when you talk about fuels with people that actually blend fuels. And we're here in the test lab where you actually do the quality control and the verification. So yeah. as a piston ring guy, the one property of fuel that's the most important to me is it octane. Right, right, well, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait, time out, right? Because you weren't expecting that, were you? No. Okay. Octane isn't the most important thing to your piston ring. The most important thing to your piston ring is the machine that's running back here, which is reed vapor pressure. So Andrews, explain what vapor pressure is and how it relates to fuel. Uh, basically it is if you imagine you have the fuel, mm -hmm. you heat it up and it's inside the balloon. The higher the vapor pressure is, the more the balloon would expand. Right. Um, that you, in, a, in an old carbureted engine, mm -hmm. it's very important you have to have the right vapor pressure, otherwise you will not get the fuel to atomize inside the carburetor. Bingo. And, and that's why you, going back many years, you had quite big difference between the winter blend and the summer blend. Yes. And you even had a special blend for the spring and the autumn time. Right, exactly. But now they make a summer blend and a winter blend, and then they put the fuel into big tanks, uh, thousands of millions of gallons, and mm -hmm. then the, the vapor pressure spring in autumn time fix itself out when they put this... By mixing through the two. Exactly. Interesting. I did not know that. So if you're kind of confused what we're talking about, think about it this way. If we had a 55-gallon drum of fuel right here, and we put a spark plug inside of it and hit the ignition, nothing would happen. Nope. Take that same drum, pull the lid off of it, put the spark plug about three inches above it, and bye-bye yes. if you hit yeah, the ignition, we, right? Yeah, we don't want to do that. No. That's a bomb at that point. Yeah. So yeah. it's what burns is the vapor, yeah, right? Absolutely. So the, the, the liquid has to go from a liquid to a vapor, and the temperature at which and the rate that it changes is what we're measuring with this machine back here. Absolutely. And yeah. like I said, in a carbureted engine, it's really critical. Fuel injection makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, because you generate a lot of heat through the piston going up and right. compressing the air fuel. But in a carbureted engine, it's very, very important that you get the air fuel ratio right and you don't have, and you have the right vapor pressure. And that's why it's important to, the fuel lines, if they get hot, yes, you can get vapor lock. Right. And that's the thing that in carburetors, right? Especially like a lot of guys with Jeeps and stuff that do the off-road climbing and stuff. Yeah. They can run into uh, you know vapor lock problems because the engines are running at high load trying to climb rocks, but the vehicle's not moving very fast, so no, it's absolutely. very easy for it to get heat soaked and there there to be vapor lock because that's at that point vapor lock is essentially where the fuel is turning into a vapor before it ever gets to the carburetor. Exactly. Exactly. Then it's, uh, it's they, stop, they stop the fuel, basically. Yeah, the yeah, fuel yeah. stops flowing, yeah. 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 In, in fuel-injected engines, there's another problem that is not just by the engine, okay. but in the fuel tank. Okay. Uh, because all fuel-injected engines, most of them, has fuel circulation yep. back, turned back into the tank. If you then have a, f a fuel with very high vapor pressure and the system is not designed to cope with that, it could be that you get the fuel aerates and then the yes. pump cannot pump air it needs to pump fuel right so therefore you can get you can you feel you're running out of fuel but you're not running out of fuel it's because the fuel has now turned into a a vapor in the tank exactly exactly see it learns something new every time i hang with this guy <laughs> now you may be wondering what does any of this have to do with the piston ring well the reality is your piston ring is a seal but just like the rear main seal on an engine it doesn't do its job by itself 
it has to work with the oil and with the cylinder wall finish. Yeah. So what happens is if my fuel doesn't turn into a gas, it's not a vapor, it's still in liquid form, when it reaches the combustion chamber, it can begin to wash the oil off the wall. And then, and, yeah, that, that of course can happen if you have a direct injection engine mm -hmm. where you don't get enough time to vaporize it, yep. or the engine tuner is a bit on the safe side and puts too much fuel into right. the cylinder. Right, so yeah, cylinder wash can happen direct injected, you know, port injected, or carbureted, it can happen. And if the engine's running too rich, tune up, it can be that way. Yeah. Or if the vapor pressure for the application is too low, it can't convert. And now all of a sudden I'm washing down the cylinder walls. I'm washing away that oil that's acting both as the gasket between the piston ring and the cylinder wall to create that seal, but it's also washing away the lubricant. Yes. that allows that piston ring and cylinder wall to lift. So a lot of times, if you see piston rings that wear out really sh in a short amount of time, the first thing to question is actually the fuel. Uh, as an oil analysis guy, what we see more times than not is if there's a high wear problem in the engine, there's pretty good likely really going to be a high amount of fuel in the oil. So high fuel dilution goes hand in hand with increased cylinder wear, increased engine wear more times than not. And it could be that you're running the wrong type of fuel for the application. Nothing wrong with the fuel itself. No, no. But it's the wrong fuel for the application. Absolutely. And we've seen that before, even some videos we've done uh, with Ben Strader, EFI University, where we've run a low vapor pressure fuel in a cold, like, drag race style dyno session, mm -hmm. we were, like, fouling the spark plugs because it just was too cold, right? Yeah, the engine yeah. was too cold for that fuel. All of a sudden, you don't change anything else, and you change the fuel to a higher vapor pressure fuel that's designed for that cold engine. All of a sudden, engine runs great. Everything's happy. Plugs are looking great. Yeah, yeah. What did you change? Well, the octane of the fuel didn't change. The brand of the fuel didn't change. We changed the vapor pressure. So that's one of those little tech ticks that yeah. I think a lot of people think about fuel. They always think octane first. This is something I don't think a lot of people they think about. They don't. Think, they don't. They don't. So yeah, it's, it's very important what Lake is saying. That too. You, you, it's not sort of piston rings. It's not the oil. It's the fuel as well. Everything needs to work together. It's a system. As I always say, it's ring seal soup. It's not steak. <laughs> you know, it's soup. They all are working together, yeah. and they have to have that synergy. So explain what the machine does a little bit to everybody. Okay, this uh, is a vapor pressure machine here. It's basically, it's, it, it's testing how quickly the fuel will evaporate. Right. So it, uh, it heats it up, and then it's, it measures the pressure the fuel is creating. It's a cycle, it's an a ASTM test, and it takes about five minutes to run through. We just run it through with uh, the Sunoco SR18 to mm -hmm. see where it is. And that is a fuel that is designed to be run in competition engines, and typically then you want the lower vapor pressure uh, because you don't want vapor lock. You don't want the, the vehicle to stop. Now this is drag racing application, so of course everything needs to be warmed up. It's also designed for fuel injected cars and high powered car, high compression ratio. Right. So with this fuel, we just tested it, and the, the vapor pressure is 37.6 kilopascal, which of course, if you don't know where the vapor pressure should be, it's very low. Uh, typically, a winter pump fuel sits between 80 and 100. There you go. And during the summer, between 55 and 75. That's generalizing. So this is below that. Yeah, lower than a summer blend fuel, yeah. way lower than a winter blend fuel. Yeah, so this fuel, in a carbureted car, it would be very tricky to start it during the winter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Especially in Alaska. <laughs> yeah, definitely not for your lawnmower, right? No, no, <laughs> hey, no, don't no. want that, no, no. you know. So that, that has something to talk about, hard, hard starting could be an indication of like, how do I know I have the right vapor pressure fuel for my application? Yeah. Could hard starting be an indication? Absolutely. Uh, if, you, if you don't have the right vapor pressure in the fuel, the, in your application, your setup, your setup might not allow the fuel to vaporize. Mm -hmm. And because, it's, remember, it's not the fuel that's being, that's many people think it, being exploded. 
it's a, the burning vapors that, and when the piston goes up and compressing the, the fuel and air mixture, mm -hmm. it's a vapor that is burning and the higher it comes up, the more pressure and it, off it goes. But if you don't have enough uh, vapor pressure to allow that perfect mix, right. it's going to run very, very rough until the engine it gets warm enough to actually generate that heat that exactly. allows it to vaporize on its own. 100%, yes. yeah. Which is why, like I said, a drag race fuel will normally be different in terms of its chemistry than an endurance racing fuel or an aviation yeah. type fuel because you're different, different atmospheric pressures, different engine speeds, different temperatures, yeah. all that factors into what's the right fuel for the application. Absolutely. You know, it's also the, the size of the piston. If uh, you have a yes. very big bore engine, mm -hmm. And at the same time, to burn the fuel, you need a faster burning fuel so you can actually reach the whole top of the piston and, and make the, the fuel and air mixture burn. That's a great point. So a four inch bore engine is going to need a faster burning fuel than a three inch bore piston. Absolutely. Say 9,000 RPM with a three inch bore versus a four inch bore, yeah. but the fuel's got to burn all the way to the end. It's got a further distance to travel exactly. in that amount of time. Yeah. And it's the same thing if you have a, the same compression ratio engine and you have a flat piston compared to a dome piston. With a dome yes. piston, you have a much bigger surface area, so you need a faster burning fuel. It says further distance to go. Yeah. See, you learn all kinds of stuff with this guy. He's been doing fuel for a little while. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a quarter of a decade. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so. so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you want to learn more, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Again, thanks for watching. Thank you very much.